Now, I was assuming that I'd have 40 minutes, but once again, question time got excited. Everyone gets excited at question time. So, a light session to finish the week off for the two, last two days. So, over the last two days, we've had 11 sessions so far. We've talked about the ways in which we can use ARCHICAD, or we've talked about tools that are associated with ARCHICAD to essentially better the way in which we work within business. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a world of new BIM tools. So, the biggest challenge I think that we face, and I don't know if I actually kept an introduction slide, I did indeed. The biggest challenge that we face with ARCHICAD users in, in business is that because ARCHICAD is so good as a tool, uh, ARCHICAD users don't actually want to go out and spend more money buying other tools. Right? Whereas if you're an Autodesk Revit customer, you're so used to a piece of that. I might put that. So you've got to be careful. Video cameras everywhere. Um, no, in all honesty, Revit's a different tool. But in terms of its usability and functionality, people have to buy additional add-ins and tools to essentially achieve the functionality that ARCHICAD does, OK? So the mindset of an ARCHICAD user is, is you know what? That's why everyone complains and they want Cine render built into ARCHICAD. They want everything built into ARCHICAD. Yet the answer is, is to be able to move forward and deliver within your business, you can't do it with ARCHICAD alone. And you have to acknowledge that. It's a powerful tool, but it doesn't do everything. So I thought I'd do this session at the end of the day to kind of cover off on a series of tools or products or things that I've seen over the last couple of months. You know, the number one rule whenever you go to a conference is go into the exhibition and walk around and talk to all of the suppliers, okay? Now, people think, oh, why would you do that, you know? It's, it's, half that stuff's not going to be of interest to me, but what you're doing is essentially, if you don't know what you don't know, you're not going to move forward. So most of it might be irrelevant, but the key thing is, is if you're aware of what's going on around you, it enables you to make better business decisions about how you're going to move forward and how you can embrace tools to either, A, improve the product you're currently delivering, or B, have an extra added value item that you can actually put on the table for clients to consider. So let's look into concept design. So this tool is developed out of Singapore. Uh, for, for the people that have been to were at KCC in Las Vegas uh, last year, these two guys presented. But this is a concept design tool that's pulling data from GIS and all sorts of other publicly available uh, information. And essentially, it's you plug in all the constraints, so they're taking this whole block, they're going to go, let's, let's try and figure out what's the optimum design for this site based upon, you know, solar, other constraints, and you can plug in all of these details. Now, this tool has just, I think it's an alpha version, but it's actually really, really new. And the beauty of this is, is that the guys have actually developed this, so this actually does plug into ARCHICAD, okay? So you can see here, you can get some pretty crazy forms, which isn't the way I do architecture, but, you know, some people are doing master planning this way, using digital and computational design and variances to see what works. They're applying different series of constraints there, saying, you know, we want view angles and axes through here, and all sorts of other fun things. But the key thing is, is that this sort of, design optioning is something you probably can't do in ARCHICAD very easily. It's not flexible enough to do that because you actually got to model things physically. That's where the use of grasshopper or tools like this can actually impact and make life even easier. That's our first concept design tool, so did blue digital foam. Quite exciting. So there's this other tool called Modular for SketchUp. Hello Brisbane. I know My it's SketchUp, and um, but we can see here we've got Brisbane. Of so of the guys so the from, uh, based in Slovenia, the data about the land use. you can plug GIS SketchUp into ARCHICAD, model. it's a bit messy, you but if you're doing mass file, site analysis, there's an opportunity potentially here to, link it to, to use a tool like GIS this file, at the start, the early phase. Import the positive GIS is, is you can use and plug in a whole series of different parameters, all the yet land use, you can plug in all of the stuff, the council regulations and site planning rules and all that sort of stuff. You can put in setbacks and height limitations and all that sort of stuff. So. 
uh, and they are. I wish he. I wish I was a bit better with my communication to them, so I actually could have. You know, the AIA are currently selling this site. If anyone wants to buy it, you can put something on here. But it would have been really interesting to see what they could have actually put on this site. But see in here, you can see that they got constraints that have come out in red because of the fact that they have problems with what's going on on the site. But it's a pretty exciting little tool. It's, these sorts of early development tools are still probably a little bit clunky. So if we draw but a rectangle it does give you an opportunity to potentially do some early sighting site studies and kind of push things very hard. But I guess if you're an expert in coding like the boys from Enzyme, you know, those guys are pushing out concept designs of major high rise buildings in a couple of, in, you know, in under a day. But it's, it's exciting that you can kind of play with these sorts of tools and achieve those sorts of outcomes. Existing asset capture. Now this one's one of the things that I find exciting. Who likes going out on site with a tape measure or a laser measure? You do. You're a masochist. You've got to buy that guy, I don't know, do you drink rum? <laughs> you know, you're an angry person at night. But existing asset capture is quite painful. Now we think we've solved the problem because if we go, okay, no longer do we need to go out on site and measure, we can go out there with, get our surveyor with a laser scanner you know, or we can go out and be really cheap and nasty and buy ourselves a BLK360 and pay 36000 for it, I think they're worth. And if you don't get it level, you can't calibrate it properly. So all sorts of problems. But we, we have the scenario where we can capture these great point clouds, which saves time and money. What happens when you take that point cloud? You can't do much with it. So the first tool I'm going to show you is a, a really cool backpack. I think this is a backpack. I think I flicked it around or not. But this is a tool that's developed out of the US. It's 150,000 US dollars. Um, ironically, when the person puts it on his back, if he walks through a standard 2100 dollars high door, he, he, he knocks it. Really expensive way to, to break something. But um, when we were down in Sydney a couple of months ago for um, our workshop for Built for, for this year, um, one of the guys from Clear Edge was walking around the Sydney Convention Centre, capturing the whole of the Convention Centre as a point cloud. Now, that, if any, is there, everyone's familiar with the way they use laser scanners. So right now they'd come into this room and they would set the laser scanner in a couple of places around the room and then it would spin for about two or three minutes depending upon the resolution, whether you want a black and white RGB, etc. So in this, he walks around, he has an iPad in his hand, and you can see progressively what he's picking up. So you can see if you've got dead spots or points where you can't actually see. So capturing the kind of the, the voids that you wouldn't see if you're thing. So pretty cool kit. Makes it hard, makes it a lot quicker to capture things. The type of, you know, Bennett and Bennett were talking about yesterday about how they're actually investigating and things like that. So putting um, scanners on top of cars because having surveyors out on the road, surveying is actually quite dangerous. So it's interesting, but what do we do now? So we're gonna get these terabytes and terabytes of data. What are we gonna do with it? So, there is an answer. Let's take a look at some of the cool new features. So Edgewise 5.4, I'm gonna do a really bad thing here now, but we're gonna see Revit here. But Edgewise is a new the exciting thing is, is that there's a tool that's been developed out of the US that automatically can take a point and cloud and through computer clouds. algorithms, Data processing identify structure, identify pipes, and model the them automatically. So you imagine Android going out, they go out and capture process scans this, um, this point cloud, they put it into a computer, database. I'd have to call it, it all must all have to be a supercomputer. It would then algorithm. process all of those elements but now they've built it so it can also register walls is edgewise's traditional and model walls automatically. Supports so you can see here, this is the point cloud that someone's taken on site. Piping, the software will automatically building, ground, generate all database. that, all of those elements. Now, at the moment, it is unstructured only supported within walls and Revit using as a Revit workflow, indoor mobile but systems. what they are we'll working to towards the is these mass data um, Clear Edge have had discussions with Graphisoft headquarters. I introduced them in Slovenia in 2018, 
and hopefully within the next 12 months, Finally, we may. That, these guys can't promise anything, can but how good would it be to be able to say to your surveyor, to you, say to your surveyor you, to extract walls you know what, if you get your hands on this, you can actually give us something in ArchiCAD you are that using data from is terrestrial meeting our needs, or an existing, existing site capture. Database. And then all you need in terms of the model, maybe your floors and ceilings. That's a really quick way of getting kind of outcomes from your existing conditions. Thanks for watching. You don't want to watch that all afternoon. What have I got next? Let's see. Alrighty. Photogrammetry. Everyone like photogrammetry? So don't try and do this on a five-year-old MacBook Pro. So this is developed out of Russia. And I decided to try and see if I could do an example of this or just my front of my house. And I walked along the front of my house with a video with my iPhone for a duration of 25 seconds. It nearly melted my five-year-old MacBook Pro. So it was converting the 20, 30 seconds of footage into about three or 4,000 photos at each little individual frame. And then what it does is it then generates a photographic, photogrammic 3D mass model. Now this is the, the process of which we talked about where you could import this into ArchiCAD. You can control the, um, the, the um, density and the polygon count. But I think they do have a free trial on, online that you can use, which connects. It's it's, a, it's its own individual software, but then you can bring a 3DS in. You can bring point clouds in if you really wanted to. So there's a whole view of, of why this tool could actually potentially benefit you. But my thought process is, is that I'd actually kind of leave it to the surveyors. Um, mainly because they could potentially guarantee a certain level of accuracy. Um, despite what we were talking about earlier today. Um, and at the same time, they've got the machines that can handle this sort of data. But it's quite exciting that, you know, say for example, you're doing an early concept design for a major project and you want them to basically just give you an area, a context around that site and not actually have to go there and do a full laser scan. They can do a, a drone flight with video capture around your site and then that then goes and gets eaten up by this uh, software and then can generate an output for you. So it's quite exciting stuff. Oh, oh actually I'm going to pause this. Somehow I'm going to pause this. Probably can't. But who has a uh, Ricoh Theatre 5? This thing here, you go around and you can and you take and you capture in each room and then use it, this Matterport app. You can generate full Three, 360 walkthroughs similar to the real estate agents. Once again, free trial available, but this could be used for a couple of different scenarios. You could use it for um, existing site capture and remote areas where you want to be able to see how the spaces all connect together. This also works with e Insta360 Pro, so it's actually quite a bit of fun. Um, that's US dollars, by the way, not Australian dollars, so it's about $3,000 a month um, based on current exchange rates. But the key thing is, is that depending upon what your needs are, you know, you could potentially help, you know, say for example, a client might do um, simulation training in their facilities. You could offer a service where you capture it using your hardware that you're using for your concept design work where you're going and capturing existing services. Once it's built, you could turn around and capture it all and then they can run live simulations through all of that. So there's lots of opportunities and these things are only $700. And you can walk into a room and take a photo and then you make sure you get everything, except you don't want to get your head in it, but it's all lots of fun with that. So in terms of project planning, um, you know, as we've said earlier, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Um, there's an online tool developed out of the US Aligning called Planly. Actually, it was originally based out of Hungary. Challenge. There is a Hungarian that works in this team named Akos. Surprises his name's Akos. That's nearly what half of the Hungarians are called. Your plan model helps teams <laughs> so this is a quite a cool tool. So most people would be familiar with NatSpec's the um, BIM management plan. This document context. here essentially used to be called LOD Planner. Is anyone familiar with that name or that term? Basically, you can document your BIM execution plan in terms of all the goals and expectations of what you're trying to achieve. But at the same time, you can document in here with infographics, because sometimes infographics is a little bit easier to read 
then utilizing um, the quick drag and drop features the lovely you know make scheduling codes and and, uh, and classification model, systems where people kind of trying to go what is it that exactly again but management filter this tool here does actually work with all classification systems progress. so you can actually plug in whatever classification system you want so the idea is is you can to the explain what model. needs to be delivered now, and when in the same location, um, who's responsible for it the only negative of this tool is it is not connected to your model for use so it's a, it's it's got a disconnect, but at the same time, it can be a good project management tool in terms of if your role is an information manager or you're the principal consultant, if you have BIM deliverables for your consultants and your internal team, you can actually go against that and check off to make sure that people have been doing what they're supposed to be doing. This this at this event, I think we've kind of I've taken a step back and and normally. At events like this, we try and present on software tools like the use of Celebri and, and Dorofus and collaboration tools and BIM Collab. But I thought I had to bring, I have to bring this up because it is an important tool. Because Dorofus is the leading planning. This tool is best in class. Brennan loves it. It's his favourite tool in the world. He, he spent ten years in it, um, delivering a, a very large hospital up on the Sunshine Coast, and it's actually been utilised on Queens Wharf. Um, basically. In a scenario where you have a client that's actually got a, you're sitting there as the architect writing a written brief, how much fun is that to confirm that your resulting drawings actually match what the client actually asked for? Um, or how easy is it to hide or the auditing process of actually those, what's actually going on with the client's brief adjusting and changing or user group meeting saying actually want something different to what you've actually got there. The Rofus is a cloud-based platform that documents all of those client requirements, be it the number of spaces, the area of the spaces, the volume of the spaces, all of the furniture that's incorporated into it. And this tool, I do believe they are moving to try and get this to a point where it becomes an asset management software. They're trying to not only have it as a front-end tool, they're using it as a ordering tool and management for procurement of FF&E, but it's also being, they're, they're trying to push it so it can be a whole of life um, tool, so it actually has a lot of value. The challenging, I guess, the only negative I think sometimes I've always struggled with is the pricing policy that they have where they charge a, a dollar per square meter. Um, per month or per annum with a minimum with a minimum spend and then you can get up to enterprise if you're pushing a lot of projects through but once again it's worthwhile doing a, a business case on this to understand whether or not the risk that you have in managing your clients briefs versus the time it takes to translate and check your documentation that meets the clients brief um, You'll sometimes, we During found on one project that we were trialling it on at Fulton Trotter that it should, if, if the project had run consistently and didn't stop like it did, we actually would have been able to save a lot of money using this tool for brief management. Your information. Issue tracking, my favourite. Let's do some issue tracking. Now, what are we talking about, issues or, <laughs> or transmittal? So who knows? But anyway. So there's a number of tools that can do this. The first one, and I'm kind of sorry for the corny kind of, you know, movies, but I love marketing movies from YouTube that try and sell software that doesn't actually show the software. Um, so there's a software that's been developed in, out of uh, Canada called BIMTRACK. Um, BIMTRACK, unfortunately, at this stage, does not communicate directly with ARCHICAD, but they are working on a BCF connection. And which Despite all of my begging of the guys and stealing costs. of their merchandise this at all the events we um, BIMTRAC, and trying to teach their, um, their team how to kick an BIM AFL football, coordination, um, centralized communications. they can't guarantee a timeline or a time frame to as to when they'll have integration with Archicad. Okay, but always as a tool, it's very powerful. Off, in just a the clip, idea is, is that when you look at Celebri as a tool for actually identifying issues, it's actually very poor in actually Issue, managing them. Context. So essentially this is a, a, a tool that identifies and, and essentially of tracks as each of the issues that are part of your project. So quickly. it's essentially a in dashboarding addition, system, the viewer will allow you to inspect each which we're going to skip through. Another tool is developed out of the Netherlands called BIM Collab. These guys, the developers of BIM Collab, actually are the resellers or were the resellers or are, I can't remember which way it is, they are still. 
Yep, so they are the resellers of ArchiCAD in that region. This tool does integrate directly with ArchiCAD. Um, it is quite nice. If we look at um, the markup tool within ArchiCAD, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of, it needs updating. Now, there is a BIM Collab plugin for ArchiCAD that actually kind of takes that markup tool and kind of gives it kind of steroids. Uh, but at the same time, this is a great tool because there's a connection between Celebri to BIM Collab and then BIM Collab to ArchiCAD. So you have this thing where you're modeling, you're Celebri, you are auditing and clash detecting, and you're sending those in, that information onto BIM Collab, and then in BIM Collab you can then assign all the tasks and tidy it up and track how people are going. So it's actually quite a powerful tool, and this is actually a really economical tool as well. Mind you, um, actually both BIM Collab and BIM Track are priced about the same. All of them do have free trials, so you can test them out on one project. Back to the BIM um, team and you know, when I talk about experimenting with things, away, one of the interesting things you can do is this not only takes the image that you have as part of a snippet as a BCF of your model that you get from Celebri or that you can attach in ArchiCAD in terms of gen, uh, tracking issues. You can actually you attach photos as well into this. So this tool could be potentially used as a defect now management tool Get on site right away. if you really wanted Check. to. So it's, it's actually something you can potentially test and try out because it actually, you know, you don't have to invest in Power BI to then have a dashboard to track all of the issues that you have on site. So it's actually quite a cool tool to play with. Then we have the next tool, which is Revis2. Uh, Revis2, what would I say? It's probably 10 times the price. It's a very, it's a, a lot more expensive tool. So in terms of issue management, it does the same things and to the same level as BIM Track and BIM Collab. The only difference that I'd put to it is that Revis2 um, also has integration with drawings. They've just implemented that over the last year or two. But at the same time, what they've done now is it's actually VR, high, high resolution VR as well. So the idea is it's being able to track issues and walk through that environment and see the issues in real life. So many people, I guess, are kind of going to this tool. It's, 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 a, it's kind of a broad, it's a, it's a wishy-washy adoption, isn't it? Builders, builders are kind of jumping on this, aren't they, Brendan? Yeah. So it's an expensive, it's an expensive tool, um, but I think, I can't remember, there's one business, I think there's bought a pile of these licenses. Yeah. Once again, the entry barrier to that tool is a lot higher though. But if you want to get your feet wet, I'd start with either of the other two. Yeah. Project auditing. What have I got here? Bluebeam. Now this is an interesting scenario. It's not just so about software. I might I will I'll talk over this, it's but not just about how many technology. people have you have within your practice it's analog people. People. people that make the decisions that mark up the drawings? Only a couple. Making information accessible. All right. So, how many people, you know, everyone. you print out the drawing and they sit there and they mark it up and then you highlight it and it's you might more than likely miss a few things because you're a bit tired because you hadn't had enough coffee sites, or it was just after lunch. And then you pile those drawings up and you're going, yes, I've done all those markups. And then inevitably, and over the length of the job, you get a pile together. this high. You don't know where they are or what's happened. It's about so Bluebeam is another Nemechek company. Future. It's a PDF tool. Initially, I was kind of like, oh, you guys are going to die off soon, aren't you? But I've actually seen get there. some of their future presentation work that they presented at uh, Built last year in Melbourne. We're Bluebeam. But this tool is a PDF markup tool, directly connects to ArchiCAD. So any markups that you put onto your layout sheets, with the, which are the PDFs, come back into ArchiCAD as, as, as markup issues. So you then end up with an audit trail. So it's a connected system, and I think we were saying about your tool earlier, Blair, that that tool doesn't currently connect to ArchiCAD, but they're investigating it as well. So, and actually what's even nicer, they're an Australian-based company, which is good to support Australian-based software companies, but Bluebeam's developed out of California. But this is a pretty cool tool, and it's reasonably priced. You pay a one-off fee, I think, of about 
depending on the scale you go to, it might be about $600 Australian. Um, and then if it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a perpetual license, you own it. But then you, if you want to get new features in the future, you pay an upgrade. But overall, pretty cool tool. This is a really experiment, another experimental tool out of, uh, out of um, Europe. I reached out to these guys and they said, oh yeah, you just test, you can get on here for free and test it out. So what this is, is an online uh, cloud-based uh, model checking software. The scary thing is, is that they kind of have all of your data. <laughs> um, it's an interesting one. I, I, it's, a, it's a very new, new tool and they've only just started with it, but basically you can upload all your IFC files, it runs clash detections, you can write into it what you're expecting to see um, from each of the collaborators and whether there's gaps and stuff like that. And you know, I could talk about another tool that's called GliderBIM, it's developed out of the UK, it's more for information management, so it's probably got less, less um, importance to you guys. But, once again, always good, play a play and see what it does. That's what I always kind of think is a bit of fun. How many people actually have Celebri here now? One, oh, that's a half. Well, you, you, oh, two people out of the whole room. Um, <laughs> geez, you're doing a poor job, Nando. God, you should have sold them a bit better. Um, in all honesty, moving to a model-based environment, yes, there are ways in which you can use ARCHICAD to audit your models, right? But the problem is, is that ARCHICAD is not designed to audit the models to the level of detail that Celebri does. And at the same time, yes, within ARCHICAD now, within ARCHICAD 23, they introduced the clash detection. Was it 22 or 23? 22, they introduced the clash detection um, capabilities within ARCHICAD as well, which meant you can choose if two building materials clash, highlight it and tell me what's going on. This is substantially more sophisticated. If you're crazy like Rob Jackson from Bon Brian over in the UK, you'll write 20, 30,000 rules into here custom uh, to granularly identify what's wrong with your model. But as we're moving forward, we're going to need tools that not only identify whether or not a project has geometric problems or geometry problems, we're also going to need to identify whether or not the information that is attached to each of these elements is what we're expecting it to be. So a really good example, and I'm not picking on Matthew, but Matthew's got a lot of properties. Now, I'm gonna give him credit because where he has properties that have got all of the connections and tying and pulling and pulling information from the attributes itself to create the property, big tick. But where you have a property that is essentially a person makes a decision and types it in or a person makes a drop down list suggestion or an answer and someone comes into the file a month later and says, oh, that table that we had there, we need to change it. So they change the table but they forget to change the properties and the properties don't change with it. Hence why Matthew is talking a lot also about how it was important to have uh, properties attached to other attributes. So once that occurs, it means that when someone changes something, all of the children follow. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a connected family rather than, oh, I use family in, a, in an Archicad event. That's good, isn't it? But oh, Autodesk are paying me under the table, mate. Come on. Um, but the reality of it is, is it's very important that information is checked. This tool is essentially the, the best in breed to actually do that. They do actually have a monthly subscription option now, I do believe that's correct, Dando. Um, it's a monster of a product at, at, at your first hit. I think it's 10, approximately 10, 11, first hit. Yeah. Yeah. Cash flow issues, yeah. Yeah. Well, I can, I can give a really good example, and, and we talk about business cases, and I've got three minutes to almost, when I'm almost in line with this, but um, when we first purchased Celebri at Fulton Trotter, um, I think at the, at the moment there was trim, a Trimble, what is it, Trimble 
Trimble bought it. What was the other one? The free one? Tekla BIM site. And we had a major aged care facility, 144 bed facility. We've loaded in all the consultants files and it took three hours for it to actually get the models happy before it even ran a clash. And I'd done some training on Celebri a few years earlier and I've just gone, I know that I can bring this in, do the full clash detection in less time than it takes to load this model. So major aged care facility, eight months of program of documentation, clash detection once a fortnight, that's 16 checks. 16 times three, whatever that is at the moment, my mind's not, that's eight times six, so eight times six is 48. And at $150 an hour, we're talking, you know, six, seven grand. So on one project, I'm nearly paying for the license. So you've got to think of the time it takes to do it another way, and you've always got to factor that in. So we have covered a lot of visualization tools as well. What, my maths was wrong? Yeah, I know. I know you guys are mathematicians and hungry, but... <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to add just one last point because of the, the complexity. There's no real awareness of the new connection to the workforce of the grid. It keeps crashing for me. It doesn't do it for me. So, moving into visualisation. We're all visual people, we're all, art, we're all designers. I like hecklers in the back row. It's normally, it's normally Matthew, he's, he's gone quiet today. But uh, we've talked about Twin Motion, we've talked about Enscape, but there are other tools available. And as I said to you the other day, we started our, our journey with Fuser. Um, that's developed out of Hong Kong. And at the time, it was the only, it was the first tool that actually had a direct API connection to Archicad, which meant I could open up Fuser, it would live link to Archicad, and I could hit one button, put a VR headset on, and go for a wander. And the difference with this tool is the tool is focused more so on uh, being able to visualize and, and work in 4D so builders and contractors can understand how to operate on site safely. Okay, so this is an added kind of feature that this tool actually has. Um, I can't remember, I think it might be about $2,600 a year. Um, whereas, you know, as you said, you got Twin Motion for free. Um, you can have people walking in this. Oh, he fell over. <laughs> he must have gone out for Friday drinks at lunch. But anyway, so sometimes this might be important to your design um, in terms of if you're working in constrained spaces. But anyway. It's, it's a reasonable tool to play with. Has everyone heard of Igloo? So this is a 360 degree um, space that is rigged up with a whole series of projectors and all, all in together. Uh, they come in different sizes. They start off at six metre diameter, nine metre diameter, they come as as a cylinder, but at the same time you can actually get them as a full-blown dome like an igloo. A um, couple of years ago, I talked, was it last year? Last year in Melbourne, I think you can hire one of these things for $16,000 a day um, or buy one for $130,000. So I went into a school down, down the Gold Coast that spent a million dollars on building a room like this to teach. So. Depending upon your business model, you know, sometimes mass houses, mass, you know, mass house builders could actually benefit from building one of these things because then they can walk their clients into it um, and et cetera. So it's a pretty cool tool. And in all honesty, the capital cost isn't that much compared to all the hardware you're getting. I'd hate to generate the content for it. Yeah. 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 Modeling assistance. I think um, out of out of Italy, we've got Archivista. They do some really cool trees, and I know we struggle for getting good quality tree content. Um, they have some really good trees that actually work well internally for photorealism 
I don't know how it's going to work with the likes of Enscape to InMotion, but if you're working internally in Cinema 4D, they can generate quite nice outcomes. They have kind of live growing trees as well if you, if you spend a bit of time on YouTube, but they also have some other library parts as well that they develop specific for their market. All right, I think this is my last one. And it looks like it's holding for me. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about Grasshopper uh, in the last day or so. Let's see if this plays. So this is another kind of, you spend a bit of time on YouTube and you see what kind of people are up to and creating. So these guys place some zones and then based on some scripting in Grasshopper, it's automatically placed walls around all of his zones. Now as he's moving and changing the zones, you're seeing right now that the walls are all moving around. Now this is kind of almost giving like a Revit-like outcome where all of the things are associative, where you start, if you move one thing in Revit, other things all move with it, which is the one thing that ArchiCAD doesn't do. It has its positives and negatives, but once again, you can see here this tool here, or scripting and coding over there. He hasn't made it available, but um, it's definitely well worth a watch and seeing the experiment. And uh, he does a more complex one, which we won't watch right now. Oh, there we go, look at this big one. He's gonna put all of these, all these walls in. So imagine doing that. So you have to know what type of wall was going between certain zones to, to drive that, which would be interesting. All right, so overall, I guess the key thing to remember about all this is that keep your eyes open, keep your eyes peeled, because you know you might sit there and go, Nathan, you talked for 42 minutes there, and at the end of the day, all of those tools mean nothing to me. But the key thing is, is now you're more aware of what's actually out there in the marketplace and what, what tools are being experimented on and stuff like that. So my suggestion is to make sure you keep your eye out, go and test some of those tools, and you might see that you might find something that actually might be grateful or good for your business. CPD, that's, CPD's a good thing for some people. All right, no questions, we've run out of time. Oh. <laughs>